I feel like it has been a bit and a half since we did an adjustable skirt experiment, so let's do another. Considering how a not insignificant number of people find another adjustable skirt video of mine by searching for Coquillico skirts, perhaps we should look more into that. I have had this beautiful green and black leafy fabric in my stash for quite a few years now. It is 2 meters, minus a bit where I made some cloth mask facings at the beginning of the pandemic. It is also reversible, so I wanted to challenge myself by making this skirt reversible too. Pockets and all. Although I might have saved myself the effort as brain fog and dum-dums were about to converge on this poor project. As I understand it, a Coquelico skirt is an adjustable skirt inspired by 18th century closures. Full disclosure here, I have not actually made a circle skirt before. I have intended to, but then looked at all the offcuts I would have and gone for a paneled skirt instead. But I think these large leaves might benefit from large, mostly unbroken panels, so this time we're gonna give it a go. Since circle skirt hems are notoriously curvy and uncooperative, I want to try the thing where we cut a hem facing at a similar curve. And since my quarter circles are leaving excellent curves... In the spirit of getting the thing I am least sure about out of the way first, we are starting with the pockets. <laughs> Madam, excuse me. I know I always French see my pockets, but it is so fast and it works so well, so I will not do anything else this time either. I am attaching our pockets to the front seam of the back panel with a little placket to help us stabilize it. This means the pocket will peek out from behind the side back panels, but they will be hidden by the front panel when wearing the skirt. The most important thing being that we can turn them inside out and have access from either side. To ensure things stay invertible, we must address the raw edges. One side of our pocket edge can be encased in the placket, while some homemade bias tape from our scrap heap takes care of the opposing side. While we are here, we can attach one of the two sets of ribbons, one of which will have two brass D-rings attached. The other side just needs a reasonably long ribbon to connect the two sides, both being anchored to the fabric with a long tail and some crisscross backstitches. All our skirt panels are cut on the straight grain, a novelty that should, in theory, mean that our seams will not stretch over much. This seems rather magical, but all the same, we are stitching up the center back seam all the way. I then fold over my selvage edge and stitch that down. Not the most ideal for our reversible friend, but unbeknownst to me, I was starting to run a fever at this point. The waistband is pieced together from different offcuts. And if you're not here to enjoy any and all opportunities for our feline overlords to use our work in progress as a bed, I don't even know what you're still doing here. A corresponding ribbon and pair of D-rings are attached to either side. In retrospect, this was a bit of an overkill. One pair of D-rings in the waistband was plenty to keep things nice and secure. And then for the front panel, which is sewn up all the way to the placket on either side.
to fell down our seam allowance, we can either cut down one and then fold the other over, or since this has been my plan all along, stitch our seams with one seam allowance twice the width of the other. This was not clever. Folding each seam allowance to either side would have made a much neater finish on either side for our aforementioned attempts at single layer reversibility. The sash for the waistband was cut from pieces as long as possible and then pieced together. And for some sense forsaken reason, I thought it would be a good idea to cut the sash on the bias. Which at this point, I can do nothing but hang my head in shame. All my other waistbands are cut on the straight grain. I should have known better. Because I have not yet realized the error of my ways, we then continue to pin and stitch up most of the sash, but leaving a gap slightly bigger than our front panel for ease of insertion later. It was at about this point that I realized that the slight under the weather feeling I had been battling was indeed ye old corona plague, leaving me bedridden for longer than any other infection has previously managed. It also took my voice. Rude. <coughs> I don't know about you, but some unfinished projects just become lead weights in your workroom. So when I came back from the sickbed, I was ready for this one to be done. Do not ask me how I turned and pressed the sash. I think witchcraft may have had to get involved at one point. But pinning the center part that was intentionally left unstitched is our next task. A nice and meditative process that hinted nothing of the horrors that were to come. Last up, several long curved pieces of hem facing are stitched together. Before they can be pinned to the bottom of our skirt. I chose to stitch up the two edges where our hem facing meets up by hand because I just couldn't find it in my head to deal with the three-dimensionality of not only our curved hem facing but also stitching it on the diagonal while pinned because otherwise it would end up a smidge too short or too long which was all just why bother? My needle and thimble were right there. A good press later, and we can fold the seam allowance in on the inside. Reverse from the fabric on this side for some contrast. And we are in for a good few hours of quiet hand-stitching meditation to finish her all up. Furry feline fabric weight is optional. And our new summerly friend is done, just in time for the changing of the seasons. There is only one problem. I don't really like it. I mean, look at it. Look at that waistband slash sash. All lumpy and weird because I couldn't remember one of the base tenets of dressmaking. Sure, the adjustability aspect is great and definitely something I will experiment with more in future projects. The pockets are large and spacious, with infinite room for treasures, and a good wide hem facing will always be a chef's kiss for me. But throughout this project, I realized that I don't really like circle skirts for my own wardrobe, which is just a personal preference, obviously. Still, I learned many a useful thing that I will bring with me for future shenanigans. The reversibility is also so subtle as to barely be noticeable at all, but I did enjoy the mental gymnastics of trying to figure out the different ways to make that work. So, this is your reminder that we all make mistakes, some more publicly than others. 
but I still wanted to share this video with you because toxic perfectionism is such a plague in our society, so go forth and make some new and interesting mistakes. Okay, bye! Oh yeah, and avoid the plague. 0 out of 10.